I spent most of the 90s uh, drawing characters at bat mitzvahs and weddings. It was so bad. Because people would get drunk and they go get mean with each other, like, don't forget her mustache. Like, and, and I just hated it. I just really, really hated it. So it's no secret Marvel's been uh, diversifying its line over the last few years. They also have the good fortune of having you in their stable under exclusive contract, and you've created some of the best and also mo most diverse characters. You have Miles Morales, Riri, who's your most recent uh, creation. Um, we've talked in the past before, and you've mentioned that you're not writing to an agenda. No. But you, you've been able to really be successful at creating real characters that are reflective of the kind of society we live in now. Yeah, it, it just, just and, and sometimes it's representation of just things I just don't see. And I know some people get focused on uh, the skin color or where they grew up, and that is important. But a lot of times what I'm focusing on is, like, like with Jessica Jones, like I'm focusing on, like I have a very happy marriage. Like I like really love my wife and we're like this great place. And I'm like, you know, I don't see a lot of like genuinely happy marriages in any, anywhere, because I know there's just drama, like we're dramatists and everyone's writing drama, but there's genuine happy joy drama in a successful marriage. You know, you would like literally see it on Family Ties. It was the last time I could think I were. The last I great TV marriage. But like, oh, they really liked the each kids. other. Though. You really feel that they, lo they loved each other. And I go, I would like to write a story about Luke Cage and Jessica Jones really loving each other. And literally the world is just a big, hot, garbage pile for them all the time and and just but 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 they are never you know what I mean they, they are they are good to go they are a partnership right and and so so when you're asked when people say diversity or representation it, it, there it's it's also about perspective and experience it those are the things that are missing and, a, and a, uh, an actress that I worked with on power has actually uh, illuminated this idea to me she said what you're doing right, and I didn't put the words in it, she goes, you're not focusing on skin color, you're focusing on diversity of perspective and diversity of experience. That's what's needed. Everyone's story is unique. You can't just create an African-American character and say, now we've created the African-American character, right? And hilariously, she said that, and then, and then when someone saw the announcement for Riri, someone innocently asked me, why do you need to do this? You already created Miles. And like no one ever said, why did you create Tony Stark? You already created Reed Richards. You would never say that. So you don't realize you just said something crazy racist. So there's no quote on how many. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's not a so on guess how what? many minority characters can be in common. So though, so uh, I created Jessica Jones because I was raised and I'm married to and I'm raising strong, independent women, and that's the world I know. That's all I know. It's literally all I know. Um, uh, and Miles, she's a strong, independent woman. Yeah, and Miles is it came out of the fact that we were literally doing a what did we do right and wrong in the Ultimate Universe conversation, like what worked and what didn't. Not, and not what worked uh, commercially. We're talking about like just knowing the truths that we put out there. And that's sometimes what people misinterpret when you saw what worked and what didn't. And we're talking like how deep did we go with our truth? And then we got onto the idea of if you literally look at the origin of Spider-Man, the, uh, the, the, the percentage of that kid being a white child was, seemed very In Queens? small. Yeah, it, it just really seemed like it, there, there was more to it. And at the same time, we had kind of committed to going down this road. Donald Glover had, had had the same thought and was trying to campaign to be Spider-Man, almost like a performance art, but really, you know, he would have taken it if they offered it to him. But, um, but totally would have. Yeah, totally. yeah, I remember when I, when, I hit the, when I broke on the internet yeah. and I was, Encouraged and then dismayed by some of the reaction. No, I wasn't. Really, I, he I, can't be black. He's a, he's a white character. And I'm like, yeah, you're see, missing the point. So we had already gone down this road with Miles, and we were going to do this. And then when Donald had done his campaign, it did re reveal to us this is the right road to go down. Like if we needed an extra little thing, then that definitely did it, right? Including the reaction, positive and negative. Like you definitely feel like you're on the right side of the argument. Mm -hmm. uh, I am thrilled that Miles connected. I am aware that there's no reason he should have. Like, P Peter Parker isn't broken. No one want the, oh, enough with Peter Parker already. It, it, no, no one was saying that, and we were on a very good run on their book. What I like about the creation of Miles, it was done not out of commercial desperation or we got to do something to get eyes on this book. It was done out of the story is being told, and this is how the story is unfolding. There was no shtick, no shock, no, 
it, it was literally, these are the characters. And so I think about that all the time and I apply that lesson learned to literally everything we've done, including Riri, which is uh, I, 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 I'm going to create things that I think need to be shown. For pe people looking at me and going, why is this white man so, so uh, uh, consumed with all of this? Well, I'm a Jewish man who has a multiracial household. Uh, two of my kids are adopted and are of color, and I am hyperly front seat aware of what the culture has to offer them and the flavors the culture is offering them, and uh, there needs to be more. And I am, and, and, and when I have and a genuine- And that obviously informs your writing. Yeah, and when yeah. I have a genuine inspiration to go down a road, I will, I will eagerly pursue it because I say, oh, uh, for however long I'm allowed to stand on this, on this box and, and tell Marvel stories, I should do what every writer who's ever been here before me has done, which is look around, see what's needed, and start adding adding to the toy box, right? So I, I, I'm adding voices and flavors that I don't see, hoping that, that it is a positive addition. So I'm thrilled with the results and response. So Miles Morales is, is gonna be in, a, in an animated film coming out Supposedly. next year. Supposedly, yes. yes. Supposedly I am consulting on an untitled Spider-Man movie that may or may not have Miles Morales in it in <laughs> December 2018. You got that Marvel, he, said, he not, said all the official talking points there. I may or may not be so thrilled about what I've seen so far that I'm gonna burst, yet I have to sit here with a Zen poker face and pretend I vaguely know what you're talking about. <laughs> NDA, anybody? <laughs> I've signed more NDAs than I've signed comics. That's what I've told people. But, uh, but so, do you think that, having said all that and not confirming or denying that there is an untitled Spider-Man movie that Miles Morales may or may not show up in, do you believe we'll see a Miles Morales live-action movie at some point? In the, a, the, a, the it truly doesn't matter. The animated movies cost just as much, if not more, than uh, the live action. Sometimes there's that there's that weird thing where a live action movie is is a, like a higher level mm. than an anime. That's not true at all. In fact, it's sure. much more laborious to do an anime. Yeah. And, and Pixar and and you know the Minions. It's it's proven that this is not the case. So, um, and also there are some stories and I that might be better in an animated feature that the, 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 the um, escapism of it wouldn't be as exciting if it was real people. I think we've already seen that. There's a couple movies sure. that I, I already wish were animated, not for Marvel, but other, other things I've seen where I'm like, that would have been a great animated movie. Yeah. Or, or, or it's so close to animated, why don't you just, like, uh, there's only one thing not animated in the movie, why isn't it considered an animated movie? Like, that's a funny thing where people go, yeah. is, uh, sure. is, is the Miles movie gonna be animated? I go. Wasn't the last Spider-Man movie about 90% animated? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It really yeah. is true. You know, you've been in the business a long time, and you were also, I think when you were young, you worked at a comic book store. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, so you, you, I've seen you've seen all. the business seen change completely. And back then, it was strictly work for hire, right? And then the, the image comics thing took off. They, they were still creator-owned, but very you know, small. I broke in at creator-owned, and creator-owned was, uh, um, and on some level still is kind of like independent film where mm. it's, it's smaller. I mean, you can literally make independent film your whole life like you make independent comics your whole life, but you're probably gonna have to take an American Express commercial to pay for everything. So um, I, I was very lucky that I got to break in, into comics and produce comics on the, na on the independent nationwide market while I was still in college. But I was you know, drawing characters and literally doing anything I could to pay my bills because the comics weren't gonna pay the bills. Yes, I, yeah. I heard you were quite in demand at, uh, at Bat Mitzvahs in Cleveland. I spent most of the 90s uh, drawing characters at Bat Mitzvahs and weddings. Uh, it was a great gig because it would be a major money for the gig, and if I got two gigs on the weekend, that could cover my bills for the week, and I could just stay home and draw Jinx, which is the graphic novel I remember. It was like 450 pages. I needed, I needed enough money to pay for the time it would take to make 450 pages of lettering and drawing mm -hmm. and writing. And uh, it was great, but I remember, because uh, you never know in comics like how long you're gonna have the gig for, and Ultimate Spider-Man was only a six issue miniseries when I got it. Like We literally convinced them to keep going. But it was issue five where I finally turned to my wife and go, I can't do these characters anymore. This is like, it was so bad. Because people would get drunk, 
and to go get mean with each other, like, don't forget her mustache. Like, and, and I just hated it. I just really, really hated it. But I must have done thousands of them. There's people all over Cleveland with some Do you see them on eBay? No, no. People Brian, don't, people Brian don't know. Bendis is a caricature yeah. from my bat mitzvah. 25 no, the, bucks. The funniest thing I did is I got hired to do for the Cleveland Improv. They hired me to draw their walls. Like, I did, like, giant murals. Wow. Of every comedian ever. It was the greatest thing I'd done at the time. Like, elaborate. It took me all summer. And uh, I'm such a comedy nerd. I got access to the club for the whole time I was working. It was great. Uh, and somebody has them, and they found them. And they texted me, I have these. Do you want them? And I go, yeah, I kind of do want them. They go, OK, $3,000. I'm like, well, that's not what I got paid to make them. Why would I? Anyway, so it's really funny. <laughs> I, I, I'm always curious to hear uh, about creators who see their works adapted into other mediums. And you've been fortunate to see many of, your, of the characters that, that you've worked on adapted on the TV. Every actor that has taken a role of a character I've created has nailed it. Kristen Ritter. It's it, Jessica it, Jones. I mean. but, but Jessica Jones and then promotes it with such love and vigor. It, it, like, it's such a partner in, in, in promoting her to the world. Like, like the acting is great, but it's also just that she represents it phenomenally well. And it, it just, it, it, and all those things, I mean, you get to know the actors and get to really, oh, now we're sharing a spirit, you know what I mean? It's, it's surreal. And what's added to the surrealness is that the level of quality of the adaptations, some of which I have absolutely no interaction with, I have no interaction with the people, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and they throw in some of my absolute favorite stuff. Uh, Victoria Hand showed up on that show. Like, that, that, that's the stuff I would have put on the show if, if it was my show. And they, and they keep doing it without knowing how much I love this stuff. So, you know, and even Joe Quesada was working on those uh, Yo-Yo uh, Rodriguez Yeah, the, the shorts, things. right? He directed those, right? Yeah, he directed those. And I was like, and I go, what are you working on? I goes, oh, I'm doing some Agent Shield. It's Yo-Yo. I go, Yo-Yo's getting a thing? Like, even Yo-Yo got a, a solo spotlight. It was crazy. And she's amazing. That's, yeah, we I love, love Agent of Shield. Yeah. Yo-Yo's one of the best new characters on that show. But I don't talk about her endlessly, but me and Alex love her just as much as we love Scarlet, which is this major thing that we yeah. created. So... You, you were executive producer, and I believe you, you wrote a few episodes of the Powers TV series, right? Yes. Um, I'm curious, as you know, we were talking about your, your work being adapted into other mediums. You, you know, you were trying to get that made into a TV show for a long time. And then you went to Sony's PlayStation Network, um, and you got two seasons out of it. Yeah. Were you, did you feel creatively fulfilled by that as much as if you would have gone to, say, a bigger network that maybe would have given you more money but less control? <laughs> No, I had a lot of the control. They were that, that was the that was the plus. It was all in house. It was Sony producing a Sony TV show for a right, Sony right. platform. So there were there were less um, chefs in the in the kitchen, which is great. Now the first season was Charlie Houston ran the show, so that was that was um, uh, not as creatively fulfilling for me because I wasn't creative. I wasn't looking for it to be creatively fulfilling. Mm -hmm. But on the second season, they uh, asked me to come on board as as a more active producer, so it'd be more like the book. And uh, that was me and uh, Rami Ubishan who, who ran the show, and I was uh, kind of like uh, right there with him. Um, running a show means you uh, firing a lot of people sometimes, and I don't want to do that. <coughs> I just want to write and produce. So yeah, so the second season, I was way more actively involved, um, and, and that was an, a great experience. Obviously, I'm sure you have a, a, a deep love for Powers. I think it was yeah, your sure. big breakthrough franchise, and, it's, and, it's, a, and it's, a, it's a book and a show that a lot of people have really uh, a great affection for. Uh, what's next for, for Powers? Are we going to see it? Well, no, we're going to we'll continue the book, and Mike just put out his art book this uh, week, which we're really, really proud of. Um, the next big um, thing for us is Scarlet. Uh, Scarlet got picked up to be a TV show. We're going to film here in Portland, and uh, it's dangerous and timely material. So we're, Who picked we're, it up? Uh, I, I, we, people know that it was at HBO last year. It is not, no longer at HBO. It is a comparable network, and uh, as soon as that deal is closed, I will not shut up about it. But yeah, but, we are, but that is, that is okay. what is next for us, is uh, the Scarlet TV show. And there's another book of mine that just got sold, and as soon as the, uh, the ink is fresh on the press release, we'll let you know about that too. But it's pretty exciting. Now what's cool is, um, adding to your original question, is that on top of watching things get adapted, I get to then experience adapting them. And that's, that, that really is unique. And when you said, did I feel creatively stifled, I was like, no, because I was, it was the, personally the opposite experience. I got to go back into material that people 
were kind about, but I might have had issues with, and, <laughs> and, and to um, re-examine it with all that I've learned since I first wrote it, that, that's a very cool experience, and I recommend it to some of my friends. I go, if you wrote something in your early career and you get to go back in and readapt it, to see what kind of different writer you've become, like to see what's important to you now as a different writer. Perspective, different perspective, more experience. Yeah, like I'm literally adapting something uh, that I, I'd originally written in college and now I'm an actual college professor. So you can't, you can't put a much more labeled what's the difference between you now and then, and it's fascinating to go back into it.